けポジションずつ<笑>あのウェアウェアプフプフプフ I'm sorry I w a n t it's me and today we will be running with Chakla on Naruto Sasuke And remember, kids, Kakashi wore his mask for 500 episodes spanning over five years. You can wear a mask for a few darn months. A y e a r s Three years. Two zero two zero, two zero two one, two zero two two. The global pandemic period has passed you. Thank you so much for keeping everyone safe. Oh, this is an energy! <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hello! <laughs> That's just amazing. Brought to you today in partnership with Full Sail University. You know, you. among anime series, fewer have been more cult. Death Notes, Full Metal Alchemist, Boruto, Attack of Titans, Bleach! Truly omnipresent than Boruto's dad. And it's not hard、Boruto's、to see why. <laughs> Ninjas. <laughs> Sasuke! Boruto's dad! <laughs> No, Sarada's dad! Brother's dad! Oh, you want to go、um, deep in the law is Sarada's dad! Himara's dad! Himawari. Are just inherently cool. And Sorry, Naruto、okay. struck a sweet balance of comedy and action with a cast of characters that many of us grew to love. And boy, did we get to spend a lot of time with those characters. The show has been running in one form or another for over 20 years. That's 700、yes. plus episodes of runtime. Yes, I grew up with that. And、uh, running is one of the things that this series is synonymous with because across all that time, all those characters and all the memes asking why Kakashi's mask doesn't breathe fire must not burn fire. when he breathes fire. One of the most memorable parts of the show is, in fact, the running. Arms back, body forward, now you're running like a real ninja. And while this running form certainly existed long before its appearance on Naruto, it was the first anime to truly popularize the concept in the cultural vernacular, and thus it came to be known as the Naruto Run. With it really blowing up in 2019 BC, that's um, before COVID, in case you were wondering, when Naruto runners made national headlines by trying to infiltrate Area 51. Ugh, such a simpler time. Anyway, the concept behind ninja running makes fundamental sense, right? It conserves energy. Rather than waste energy moving your arms together with your legs or throwing your body back and forth with each arm swing, leaving your arms motionless behind you should both preserve energy and make the running more efficient. Or you can hide weapons, kunai, swords,、uh, a rushing gun, a chidori behind so that you can attack. Uh, person doing Other、it. YouTube channels have、yeah. covered the science of the Naruto run in the past, including my buddy Kyle Hill and his show Because Science. All、yeah. of them coming more or less to the conclusion that the run is not only less effective, but also potentially dangerous to high performance athletes. I, on the other hand, disagree. It's my theory today that there is a very solid reason, backed by real world science, that the ninjas we see in Naruto and warriors that we see throughout all of anime, and heck, even Sonic the Hedgehog himself, are chosen to run. Run in exactly this form. Today, we justify you, strange kid in gym class who chooses to run this way. Today, we Sasuke choke the naysayers and legitimize the Naruto anime run once and for all. And you monkey go <laughs> the illusion into it. Real world sprinters are a good place to start when it comes to determining the fastest run times. In races like the 100 meter dash, tenths and even hundredths of seconds make the difference between gold and silver, which means that if there are tactics to give even a tiny Edge in a race, sprinters are absolutely gonna use them. So,、yes. why then are they pumping their arms like a noob and not ninja sprinting like an elite? Well, a lot of it has to do with balance. Whenever you run, you're constantly shifting between putting weight on your right foot and your left foot. Your center of gravity is normally located in between your two legs, which means that when you're suddenly putting all your weight on your right leg, your body naturally leans left, and when you put all that weight back on the left leg, your body naturally leans right. By pumping their arms, sprinters are counterbalancing. The constant shifting of their center of gravity. And that's not all. A study was done at the University of Houston which looked at various running positions with non swinging arms, crossed arms, hands on head, and of course, the Naruto run. It- Center line. In each case, these alternate forms increased overall energy consumption. They were less efficient. Runners who swung their arms used 3% less energy relative to those using the Naruto style. In short, it seems like when challenged with actual real world science, the Naruto run is a dud. How do you feel about that, Dad Rudo? Because people called me a failure. I'll prove them wrong.
Well, call me Shikamaru. Oh my god! Byakugan! Because I'm here to help you do exactly that. You see, most <laughs> of the up. upsides of the Naruto run should be in its more aerodynamic form. So not sure if you know, right? Uh, Shikamaru have the shadow paralysis jutsu. So, can control you, like your shadow. Yeah. The cool. runner is shaped more like a compact wedge, cutting through the air more effectively than a normal upright running position. This form, in theory, is supposed to reduce the runner's overall in drag theory. force. Or, uh, I suppose, drag foche, as I apparently mistyped it in the script. Good job, Matt. Anyway, as you run, you're constantly pushing air molecules out of your way. And likewise, those air molecules are resisting against your movement in whatever small way they can. When moving at low speeds, that effect is barely noticeable, right? But the effect gets increased increasingly higher the faster you go. If you've yes. ever stuck part of your body out the car window while driving down the highway, you know what I'm talking about. The Naruto run, so the thinking goes, reduces drag force because it reduces your profile, meaning less air yes. is hitting you as you run. Like case and points, like a bird, or like a car, airplanes, rockets. Jets. Not only that, but it also Shh, shapes rockets. your body in such a way as to reduce the coefficient of drag by making your body more aerodynamic. A study found that runners who wore more aerodynamic clothing designed to reduce the drag force on their body had a teeny tiny advantage over those who didn't, shaving a mere 0.01 seconds off of their 100 meter dash times. That tiny bit does actually matter. After all, in the 2016 Olympics, the difference between the silver and bronze medalist times was 0.02 seconds. As as a result, many Olympic sprinters have taken to wearing aerodynamic swift suits. So again, why aren't they running like a super cool ninja if every optimization here counts? Well, case in points, human beings run very slow in comparison to like an arrow, oh sorry, like um, an arrow also sharp. Well, the benefit here just isn't worth it. You can wear a swift suit without it interfering with it your overall slow. running form. Conversely, the tiny, tiny benefit that the Naruto run gives in being more aerodynamic just isn't enough to offset the balance problems and increased energy usage that comes with it. Humans just aren't running fast enough to have drag factor in as a significant problem. See? Humans just ain't running fast enough. And that, my friends, is where everyone else is making their mistake when covering this topic. Because here's the thing, Naruto and the gang aren't just normal runners. Sure, for real-world sprinters, drag force is basically negligible. But if you look at some of the feats of speed that we see throughout Naruto, the ninjas start to look a lot less like real-world Olympic sprinters and a lot more like high-performance race cars. In yes. other words, they're reaching speeds where the drag force acting on their body would be a significant significant factor. And that means we have to take a closer look at how drag would affect the body, not of a normal human sprinter, but of a ninja whose speeds border on the supernatural. The ninjas that we see in Naruto are dodging laser energy blasts, running at speeds that approach the sound barrier, and dodging attacks that literally have the word supersonic in the title. Supersonic those speeds, drag force suddenly becomes a real drag. Just look at the equation for drag force. Now, Shikamaru a drag. We don't have to understand any of this right now. We'll get to it in a minute. But the one thing that I want to call out is right here. Drag force equals a bunch of things times v squared. That's velocity squared, which means that if you're having an object moving twice as fast, it doesn't just double the drag force, it quadruples it. Four times the velocity means 16 times the drag. That is why the drag force acting on a 25 mile per hour or 40 kilometer an hour sprinter can be so different from the drag force acting on a race car that reaches 10 times that amount of speed. A study looking at the effects of wind on runners found that the equivalent drag force experienced by a human running at 25 miles an hour or 40 kilometers an hour would be the equivalent of about 9 pounds of force, just around 40 newtons. Far more drag force than any of us will ever experience in our lives since Usain Bolt, the fastest runner alive, is just barely over that mark. Taking what we know about drag force, that means that Naruto, running with the same normal upright running form at 250 miles an hour or 400 kilometers an hour, would be experiencing a whopping 930 pounds of force. Running through air. 
Understand that? Acting against him via wind resistance. If he manages to get close to sonic speeds at around 750 miles an hour or 1200 kilometers an hour, that drag force is going to be magnified to 8,370 pounds of force. That's not just impressive speed, that requires insane amounts of strength. You literally are cutting through thousands of pounds of wind directly blowing against your forward motion. But again, all of that is using a traditional running form. If the Naruto run is is indeed able to reduce that drag force by, say, like, even as low as 10%, that would be the equivalent of him attaching rocket thrusters to his legs, exerting a force of 837 pounds, propelling him forward. So, is the Naruto run making any sort of difference? Well, let's take a closer look at that drag force equation again. All of this in the beginning here isn't going to change. Velocity is just how fast we're running, and that little thing looking like a P is actually measuring the density of the fluid that we're running through. A.K.A. air. By the way, fun fact, I just love this kind of mathematics equations. Thank you so much, MatPat, and thank you so much for the team behind these videos. You guys are awesome, entertaining, and educational. So, entertainment for the win! Thank you so much. Neither of which are going to be affected by the runner's form. It's really these last two variables at the end where we can see the effectiveness or lack thereof of the Naruto run. The so area A here is actually based on the orthographic projection of the runner, which basically just means it's looking at the area of their front, everything that's hitting the air as you run. A runner can reduce that by, wouldn't you know it, crouching down and leaning forward, which is exactly what we see with the Naruto run. Just by measuring his height in different shots, we can see that leaning forward, he's effectively reducing the height of his orthographic projection and the overall drag on his body by about one quarter, 26% if we're being exact. Coefficient of drag, meanwhile, CD over here is a bit more complicated to figure out. In fact, the real world method for calculating coefficient of drag is usually less about plugging numbers into an equation and more about looking at experimental data. And go figure, there just ain't a lot of real world data on fictional supersonic ninjas. But we- Yeah. So, error for, for I'm sorry, it can't be found. Sorry can at least get a better idea of how much drag reduction a ninja might be able to get from leaning forward and trying to make their body as aerodynamic as possible by looking at a few comparisons. According to NASA, the least aerodynamic shape was a vertical flat plate, and the most aerodynamic shape was a typical airplane wing. A bullet experiences just 23% of the drag force experienced by the flat plate, and an airfoil experiences a mere 3.5% of the drag experienced by that flat plate, which goes to show that just by having the right shape, you could reduce the drag force on your body by as much as 96.5%. Now, simply leaning forward isn't enough to magically morph your body into the shape of an airfoil, but studies done on skydivers find that depending on how you position your body, you can reduce the coefficient of drag by as much as 30%. And that is in addition to the drag reduction Naruto is already getting from bending over. Factoring both of those into the drag equation, we get ourselves an effective drag reduction of 48% 8.2%, nearly half, which, if he's moving at the near supersonic speeds we talked about earlier, is the equivalent of giving himself an additional 4,335 pounds of thrust when he runs. That is the equivalent of having two turbo jets strapped onto his body. When you look at it from those numbers, there is no doubt that the Naruto run is the superior running style for any high-speed, high-performance ninja. Of course, it kind of goes without saying that all the people who've done experiments showing that this style of running won't help you run faster are you. technically right. But when but if you can muster up like um, Chakra, Naruto, uh, Chakra, so yeah. You're dealing with the velocities that we see in Naruto, the seemingly insignificant factor of drag force suddenly becomes a lot more significant. So, mm. while I may have let down that weird kid in gym class for his awkward running style, sorry my sorry. friend, it's not gonna help you. I have just empowered a whole lot of anime fans in science class to pass their aerodynamics lesson with flying <laughs> colors. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And speaking of passing classes with flying colors, Today's episode is brought to you by Full Sail University. Did you ever wonder why the show looks and feels the way that it does? Animations flashing across the screen and a cutout of me rather than actually standing there with live action shots? Well, a lot of it has to do with my skills and equipment back when I started the channel. Pop the weekly video into your web browser. I hadn't majored in filmmaking in college. I was a theater kid through and through and I was too poor to even afford anything beyond basic editing software. So I was stuck with a cheap microphone in a tiny closet 
closet and literally no experience. I All right, for me, I'm using photos. You, you know the thing that's just come default with um, Windows computer? Yeah, F photos. I, I, and I'm not using even using Windows computer. It's it just Windows system, operating system. So, yeah, $360 uh, laptop could envision how I wanted scenes to look like in my head, but I couldn't execute them in real Somebody life, so I was left just doing them in rudimentary animations. Over time, I've taught myself a lot, and I've gotten a lot more confident in directing people on real life sets, but it's still something that I wish I had greater experience in. I still don't know what to call certain objects on set or certain shots, so I always feel a little bit awkward. Which is why, if you are interested in pursuing a career in film and entertainment, I recommend the sort of training that Full Sail University provides. Their film bachelor's degree program immerses you in the world of filmmaking, giving you the most important thing for a career in content creation, hands-on experience. Even back in my theater days, it was always my belief that knowing all parts of the production process made you better at the thing that you wanted to specialize in. And it's the same at Full Sail University, showing you what it's like to work on every part of a film from start to finish. Their digital cinematography online degree program merges the artistic concepts of traditional filmmaking with the technical tools that are used in everything from documentary filmmaking to commercial production to, yes, even web video. Plus, in today's world, time and practical experience are everything. And so these degrees are offered on an accelerated format to get you into the field faster, making connections and putting work on your resume that much quicker. With hands-on projects, industry-experienced faculty, and professional equipment and sets, you'll be prepared to pursue your passion in no time. Full Sail grads have gone on to work on some pretty incredible films and TV shows like Avengers Endgame, Joker, The Mandalorian. If you want to find out more about these film programs and how to get started, visit fullsale.edu slash thefilmtheorist to learn more. Don't kid yourself, you're not going to type that into the URL bar. Just click the link top line of the description to do it. Or, you know, just call up Full Sail University and tell them that MatPat sent you. Just do it. I bet not many influencers tell them to just call up the school and tell them that MatPat sent you. So do it. Just give them a call. With that being said, I'll see you all next week for a very important video and a very special announcement. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video together with me. I hope that you find this video very interesting and just all in all just very entertaining, right? And fun! <laughs> if, you do, if you do like this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel and comment down below. Sorry, right, right, down below if you have anything to share with us. Don't forget to follow my channel and see appreciate all of your support and passion for my work. It's very motivating and uplifting to see all your passionate, wholesome comments. And thank you! But hey, that's just a theory, a film theory, and cut. Thank you. <coughs> and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much. Subscribe.